Burning out the bushes. Close cam. <laughs> you, know, you guys, so we actually postponed this video for at least a whole day because this. We got a light. Freaking professionals. I was about to be wearing a. Uh, the lab bike and our recorder thing, but then our yeah, the adapter broke. Adapter thing broke. So, um, so obviously, dude, look at this tape. This is like this all lot. these parts are too beautiful to put on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my biggest gripe with this entire kit. Is they took the time to make like everything so badass and like it's going on a race car, and I'm just gonna go ahead and ruin it. The cool thing is, you will see this through the diffuser cutout. So, in the old it's one, it's not all going to waste, you know. <laughs> in the old kit, it's going well. In the other two, yeah. So we took the whole kit off. The I had their R two hundred long nose kit, short nose, whatever comes in at S thirteen or S fourteen. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. It's been it's like two thousand eleven when I first bought their early conversion kit. Um, but they have been nice enough to sponsor us and send us this kit. This is like one of their first four 8.8 kits, which is awesome. I mean, you know that we have a tight, you know, relationship with T3 in general. But yeah. I wasn't expecting to do all this, so I'm hyped. Um, so this basically just replaces your entire rear suspension. Um, the actual 48.8 kit comes with their rear coilovers as well, which they have a bunch of options for. Um, the hubs are Mustang hubs and they do convert you to five lug. Ooh, so you're gonna do five lug up front too, I'm guessing? Yeah, I think I am gonna do five lug. At first I was thinking I would just, I bought a set of five lug wheel faces. Pretty much the same offset as my current faces. So all you need to do is like paint them and then, you know, they'll uh, just swap out my center. But I'm also waiting on my wheel lips, which were supposed to be in stock and then they're supposed to take two weeks and now they're gonna take like six more weeks. So, story, March, yeah, story of parts. I, know. <laughs> I mean, I know COVID's slowing everything down and it's even slowing down my shipment and stuff like that. So you I understand. Can understand. It's, it's all good. It's just disappointing because I want to start driving this car. And everyone in the comments, I know, I want to drive the car. Oh God, no, like, we've been following it for three years, it. four years. Yeah. I would love to. Um, I don't have an ECU right now and I don't have a diff in it, obviously, right now. But I mean, we're going to fix that. This particular diff is out of a 2011 Ford Explorer. There's a couple different uh, gear ratio options even available. I went with a 3.73. It's a little bit lower than my 410 that was in my R200. Um, I think that's gonna suit this better, which is like one of the main reasons I went with this kit. Also, um, just freshening up the rear end, the power brace, this actually, this whole section, these connect into this piece, but they actually have the lower sections of the bit of the frame that holds the lower control arms mm -hmm. in the rear. So the lower control arms on your factory setup, they have little mounts that hold the very back half of the control arm. They have little tiny caps that sit on the back of the control arm, and then they have a single bar that goes across the front. So when you actually accelerate super fast, or like from like a dead stop, control arm will actually shift backwards and it'll change your caster a little bit as you're accelerating. This is what Technotoy Tuning has built to one, hold the front of the R200 diff, I mean the Ford 8.8 diff, and then it also will you know combat that and make the whole thing a lot stronger. They call it their power cradle. It has these, which are like, you know, these fancy boys that, uh, cup the bottom of that. I wish I had my old ones sitting here. They were literally rusty. Yeah. <laughs> Gross OEM 50 year old like stamped sheet metal. Why would someone, I guess, switch their default to do like the 8.8 .8 setup? Um, well, I think the 8.8 .8 rear in general is just super strong. And on top of that, it's, this diff was literally like 200 and less than $250 for this diff shipped to the shop. But, while the diff is cheap, this is not the cheapest rear end kit 
that's out there on the market for 240Zs in general. But I will say it is definitely gonna be the strongest kit out there and you know that no corners were cut at all. Like everything they've thought of, they've taken their time when developing this kit. So if you wanna just buy it once, install it once, if you do have a diff problem, you can just swap out the diff probably in like 20 minutes and they're $250. I think it's like a no-brainer. It's a great way to go. If you're building a 240Z that's gonna be powerful and have any type of like likelihood of maybe snapping axles or blowing a yeah. diff or something like that, it's, I was just you wanna to not worry about it. This is the best option. I like the fact that you can get a diff dirt cheap and they're like super accessible. Yeah. Cause so many boards. You'll put more money up front in all of the Everything like the hubs and the the coilovers that come with this kit and everything that, and the crazy, they made their own custom Kamali axles, 4340 Kamali axles. Dang. With like Mustang ends and stuff like that. Yeah, so they everything should be bulletproof. And if you need to, you can just buy a tuner like this and throw it in. But these dips <laughs> should hold like 700 horsepower easy, so. All right, so first things first, before we start installing the cradle and everything, we're going to install the diff cover. Um, they're these little load pad things that run on top of uh, press on top of these guys. But they did mention that you should use a gear oil capable uh, silicone sealant on the bolts in the cover and probably in the, these two mounting bolts for the mustache bar as well because otherwise you could possibly have some seepage through them. So we're just gonna run those back out. And then throw the cover on. Nice thing about the cover too is it, um, the OEM cover had an actual, like a silicone bead around it. This comes with the cover and all the hardware you need, so. I can't wait to see this thing mounted up there. It's gonna look great. Me too. I mean, the, the R200 kit looks good, but. Also the entire kit, you only need like four different size sockets and L's, which is pretty cool. Pretty by torque. Fully torqued. The diff cover bolts. Again, let me run these in. Don't you love the smell of diff fluid? This stuff actually doesn't smell that bad. Sure. This smells a lot like Elmer's glue. I have some nightmares of diff fluid. Yeah. I hate the smell of this stuff. Yeah, most gear oil's like, like, oh. Cut the cheese. Wasn't me, bro. <laughs> Just get it over with. <laughs> Ooh, this is a lot nicer than their old setup. You get like fish bolts in, which wasn't the worst, but this at least has on one side, it's got a lot more room. They snuck in. <laughs> 30 foot pounds. What? Yeah. Damn. I think I can kind of see it. I like they show you down here too. 30 foot pounds for these boys too. I can definitely see that one. Let's get it close. Idiot proof. Yeah. One other thing I want to mention real quick with the mustache bar. This is the same mustache bar they run for the R200, short nose, R230. So they have all the mounts and they're all labeled on here. So even if you don't have the Ford kit and you have the R200 kit, their newer version of this has slots on the ends of it here on one side only. See how these are just circular and these are oblonged over here. 
which is awesome because it gives you a little bit of play left and right on like where to mount this. Um, one, to make sure like the diff is perfectly centered, but also two, because I remember when I put mine on, it was like, I feel like these cars were built 50 years ago. They're not gonna be, the standards for factories back then were not exactly the same. So that gives you a little bit, cause you have to run these onto these posts and it's gonna be like kinda tight sometimes. Behind the scenes, <laughs> iPhone action. Uh, I did not mention before, but um, I did replace the bushings. Greg and I uh, earlier today torched out the old rubber bushings, and then I froze these bushings. And this one, I did not heat this cup up enough, and it went in halfway, and then it wouldn't go any farther, so I beat the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I heated up thoroughly, and it slid right in. <laughs> so, take your time. <laughs> Next up, gotta go ahead and put it in. Let's slide her in there. Loosely put together the power cradle, um, which is just this main section that actually has two of these little diff mounts, and then these two bars, which run to both of the pickup points for the rear control arms. Um, and these diff mounts have a bunch of little bolts in the back that you actually bolt these bolts through here. They have so many different configurations because depending on what diff you have, it might be mounted here or here or just running two through the sides. So I already have one mounted on the other side, but I'll show you. It takes a long bolt through it and that catches the head. And then my washer. So this mount will go on the other side, obviously. Sorry, I set this one up. I'm gonna leave them loose right now so we can get the power cradle up, which is also a little loose, and then we'll line everything up, get a hand tight, and then tie it all back up together. So when you're making the power cradle, we're putting these side pieces on, put them on this way, not this way, because when this is mounted up, this is actually um, facing down, and the actual head of these guys, which is rounded, gets really close to the control arm. But so they're made to sit like this instead of the other way. Yeah, we had them on backwards. Yep. Okay, so the last piece we have to do is uh, assemble the hubs and then just put the axles in them. But So these are the same hubs that they run for their R200 kit, which does not use the Mustang hub. So what they did was make this adapter, which you sit on here. And then you run these little shorty bolts in there, which I'm gonna use Loctite. Which I'm sure this has two functions. One is to change the bolt pattern because of the Mustang hub has a different bolt pattern than the S13 hub they usually run. But then it also adds spacing to it so you can run, um, so on the on this whole kit in general, you can run any of Technotoy Tuning's brake kits. They have two different rear brake kits. And then they, you can also run any S13, S14, or Z32 brakes. Like that's rotors and uh, calipers and everything. So the little ears on here are made. So it basically just adapts all your stuff to S13 stuff. So, or Which or any really, of the other. I guess it's really dimensions. popular to do. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a million different pad options. So if you're trying to do some street driving, you can get some light wear pads that are not too crazy, or if you want to get some super squeaky race pads, do whatever you want. 
There's a million options out there. One of the pieces that did not have the torque spec on it. So, we realized after the fact that the axles are actually different sizes. This one's got like a little conical shape where the other one's flat. This one's actually slightly thicker and they have two different color rings, which we should have realized once they have two different color rings. But there's a black ring and then there's a yellow ring. Uh, the yellow ring should go on the passenger side because it has a slightly thinner collar and the black ring should go on the driver's side. We put the yellow on the driver's side but we accidentally uh, popped it all the way in to these little clips. And I don't have the tool to get that popped out right now. The little axle puller tool. Yeah. But it's not here at the shop. So we're gonna do that another day. But we're still gonna put the this side all, all the way together because it's two bolts and you can drop the whole hub down, slide the axle in once we have the puller. Um, the other thing I'm also waiting on anyways is five lug S13 rotors. So my S13, Single caliber brakes were completely fine, mm -hmm. but the uh, the rotors I have are four lug, so I just get five lug drill rotors and wheels. And yeah, but we got that solved. Okay. okay, so that is the Ford 8.8 uh, rear conversion kit from Technotoy Tuning. Huge thanks to Techno Toy Tuning for hooking us up with this kit and for just being awesome in general. <laughs> um, I'm way more confident with this whole setup and these axles. I always kind of had questions about the other axles, but um, I'm super hyped. Also, it looks insane. <laughs> um, so, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for buying the shirts, the merch. Oh, yeah. Look, it holds up. We do a lot of dirty shop days. That's it, we're out.